is if you look at the central cube here, it's a little hard to see because it's tilted. The whole figure turns inside out through the center of that cube without distorting. In other words, it's the same on the inside as it is on the outside, and it can rotate through itself and maintain self-similarity and compression. So this is where all higher energy pressure waves nest. All of the five 3D solids can be nested in it. All of the 12 regular Archimedean solids can be nested in it. It can generate all the lower 4D. It can generate all the higher 4D. It can also generate every image, which there's only three in 5 and 6D, can generate all of those. This is literally the geometric origin of the Philosopher's Stone, as the angels told Dee and Kelly. Now, this by itself is pretty astounding that uh, the angelic intelligence would be able to deliver something that would take 400 years for mathematics to catch up with, which sort of brings me around to the message. If you were a vastly intelligent, vastly powerful spiritual being or race of beings, such as the Ophanim or the Whirling Ones, and you notice these little quick short-lived monkeys were trying to evolve, you, you wouldn't squeeze something physical into a tin can and throw it right below the speed of light across the galaxy. That's terribly inefficient. You would simply deliver to them something that would be really important. Now let's imagine that you're on Gilligan's Island. Anybody remember the old TV show Gilligan's Island? Okay. How many times did the professor make a coconut radio? Okay. So what the angels did is they sent the instructions, first of all a language so we could communicate, and then they sent the instructions on how to build an astral internet, an astral radio, an astral communication set. So if you were a higher intelligence, and you wanted to help out these little quick monkeys down here, the first thing you would do is teach them how to communicate with you. So you could give them more instructions. You, you wouldn't arrive and, and offer them a potato pancake and, and blow their minds, or you wouldn't take them and give them anal probes and check their DNA. That would violate free will. Free will is a constant in the universe. But you would send to the most brilliant mind on the planet. Anyone seen the old day the earth stood still? Michael Rene? Well, remember, Michael Rene wanted to go see the equivalent of Einstein. That's right. And that's exactly what the angels did. They looked for the brightest monkey mind on the planet, and they said, here, figure this out. So Dee was able to receive all this. Kelly, being a, a very sharp, practical guy, was able to use some of the science without understanding it. And now, 400 years later, we have the actual math to go, Whoa, okay. Now, if we think about all the other ET, UFO encounters, the proof is lacking. It's, we don't have any hard science. We, we don't have really a piece of, a, of an alien ship. You know, maybe in Area 51, who knows. But this is proof. When this was received in the 16th century, no one understood it, and no one could understand it. The math did not exist. And the fact that in the last 70 years or so, we've developed the math that allows us to understand this, it's solid proof that Dee and Kelly were actually talking to a higher order of intelligence, and a vastly higher order of intelligence, an order of intelligence that comes from different dimensions or at least works through higher dimensions. Okay. Um, if you go to the, uh, uh, the penta pentagram with the nesting, it's further down, further down. There it is. Right there. That one? No, one below it. Okay. Right? Now, have you ever wondered why all the witches and all the magicians use pentagrams? What's the importance of a pentagram is? Right? 
In 4D, the analog of a tetrahedron is called a pentatope. And a pentatope is a tetrahedron with another tetrahedron stuck on each of its four faces. So there are five pentatopes, five tetrahedrons in a pentatope. Now, if you took a pentatope and tilted it properly so that you could shine a light through it from 4D down to 3D, the resulting figure would be a pentagon pentagram. And the order in which we draw our pentagram pentagon, according to the law of attraction and repulsion, is actually the stacking order of the angles of the tetrahedron. So that when we draw an invoking pentagram, we're bringing energy from 4D into 3D. And when we draw a banishing pentagram, we're sending the energy of 3D back into 4D. In other words, unmanifest, manifest, manifest, unmanifest. And as you can see from this diagram, each of the shaded regions, they're shaded to give you the idea of, of how the tetrahedron is stacking. But if you stack them properly, this is what you form. form. Okay, and there's the pentatope. So when you're drawing a pentagram in the air or using it as a sigil, you're ordering energy from higher, more subtle four-dimensional energy down into 3D and then taking whatever energy you like from 3D and bumping it back up to 4D. Now again, this is a traditional method of doing very complex science that we only begin to understand now. And one of the basis, the basis of, of this science could not be clearly understood until we had a formulation of a mathematical fourth dimension. But every witch worth her salt knows how to use the pentagram, okay? Go back to the order, Dan. Yes. He, he wants that one. Well, these shaded pieces, this is banishing, this is invoking. So the order in which you stack and draw these lines that outline the edge, that forms the invoking or banishing pattern of the pentagram, moving it from 3D up to 4D. Okay, how are we doing on time? About 10 minutes? Okay. Uh, I, I don't, don't want to really get that, th that deep into it. Um, let's go on with the ETs. Okay. Click, click on that one. Uh, yeah, the, that project tree, the one right above it, right there. Now, how do higher order intelligences in the galaxy know where we are? It's because the Earth has a zip code. And that zip code is based on your good old Kabbalistic tree of life. If you take a tree of life, we lost it. Okay. That's interesting. Yes, there you go. If you take the tree of life and you project it outward onto a sphere roughly one light year in any direction from the sun, you get in one direction something like this. Now imagine that we're filling this in in all four directions so that the central pillar of the tree is unique and the side pillars overlap and we have 26 circles. Okay, and if you can go to the other one. Uh, no, it's, it's further up. Yes, that one, that one. Yeah, it's hard to see without my glasses. There you go. Now, this is the northern hemisphere, this is the southern hemisphere, and if we just simply from Earth diagram this pattern, there are stars in each of these circles. Now this circle right here is at the ecliptic, north pole of the ecliptic, and it appears from our telescope-based ideas that there is